Hello and welcome to the Nature for All interview series with George Green. This interview was made possible by the Nature for All Discovery Zone. My name is Caitlin Brandt and I'm from the Canadian Wildlife Federation and an alumni of the Canadian Conservation Corps. Uh, I'm joined today with Marie-Philippe Ouellette uh, from Parks Canada and George Green, uh, the former Assistant uh, Director General of the IUCN and then the IUCN Council Member for North America and the Caribbean between 2008 and 2016. He was also the chair of the Canadian IUCN Committee from 2012 to 2016. Thank you guys for being here. Today, we're going to be discussing three topics surrounding the IUCN or the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, which is the largest nature conservation organization in the world with over 17,000 plus members from over 160 countries worldwide. Our first topic is IUCN 101. We will discuss the basics of the organization with our expert, George Green. To start, uh, what is the purpose of IUCN? Well, I'm going to start by saying that IUCN is a cause. The cause is nature. So if we will, IUCN stands for nature in the world. Uh, IUCN started with a relatively narrow understanding of nature, if I might say, a science-based one on protection, protection of species, protection of land. But the proper answer to this is written in the IUCN statutes, the rule book. So the official purpose of IUCN is, objectives of IUCN shall be to influence, encourage, and assist societies throughout the world to conserve the integrity and diversity of nature and to ensure that any use of natural resources is equitable and ecologically sustainable. That definition of IUCN's purpose was actually established in 1996 at the World Conservation Congress in Montreal, uh, and it has stood the, uh, the test of time. Let me also add that IUCN plays several roles, but I'm going to highlight just three of them. It's a global standard setter. It is the standard setter on species at risk, how they're determined. It has established the protected areas categories for the world that are adopted by many governments around the world. And very recently, just this last this summer, IUCN set a new global standard for nature-based solutions, trying to keep up with the times. One of the ways to think of IUCN, which was phrased by Meg Beckel, the president of the Canadian Museum of Nature, a government agency member of IUCN, is that IUCN is the United Nations for nature. That's really the role that it plays. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much, George. Uh, and I can see this PowerPoint in front of us uh, and has all the different parts of the IUCN. And uh, it's a little complicated. I was wondering if you could explain the dis different aspects. You will hear in my answer that it's even more complicated than, than, than uh, participants are seeing in front of them here. Let's just start with the members. The members are actually in a formal part of the IUCN statutes, the World Conservation Congress, the place where the membership made up of government, non-government and Indigenous Peoples members make decisions for the long term and the big decisions for IUCN. The next component of IUCN are the commissions. These are six expert networks around the world comprising, I think, in total more than 10,000 people who are science experts, who are management experts, they're law experts, they're communications experts. And finally, we have the secretariat, which is the paid staff. Usually in the last few years, around 1,000 people distributed in 11 regions and many national and regional offices around the world. Underlying this is the ICN Council. It is the representative of the members, both government and non-government, that makes the interim decisions between Congresses. For example, how to interpret IUCN policy, what positions that IUCN take, uh, how, the approval of products from the commissions, like the recent uh, nature-based solutions work. And I will add there is one other component of IUCN, which are the national and regional committees. So members have come together since 1996 to form their committees, mainly at the national level, to advance IUCN's interests within the country, again, using the structure of government and non-government working together. Great, thank you. Um, I was wondering, just as a follow-up, 
is, can you go in more depth about the commissions, the six different different ones? Sure. So um, because we, I'll read them out because we have in front of us just acronyms. Starting from the last, Commission on Education and Communication, Commission, Commission on Ecosystem Management, Commission on Environmental, Economic and Social Policy, the World Commission on Protected Areas, the Species Survival Commission, and the World Commission on Environmental Law. Those six commissions are headed by what are called chairs. Now the chairs are elected by the members at the Congress. They usually represent, well they do represent experts in the field who worked for many years within those commissions as well as in their home institutions and have gained the credibility to lead these world networks. Uh, and so they are really quite high standing positions, but they are voluntary. And their job is to mobilize the expert members around the world, often organized into working groups or specialist groups in specific topics. The commissions also through the chairs participate in the IUCN Council, which is also made up of government and non-government members. They're called regional councillors. Then finally, the secretariat uh, often plays a big role. It has the money. It is led by a director general. Uh, prior to the current director general, the previous two were women from different parts of the world. So that interplay among these three set parts of the union, as well as the council, really make IUCN very strong, but at other times make it quite a job for the director general to keep the troops all in line. Thanks, George. And my question is, is uh, IUCN is an NGO? In law, IUCN is a not-for-profit organization. Its headquarters are en Suisse, c'est une association or a not-for-profit uh, organization established under Swiss law. However, IUCN, because of its government membership, as well as the non-government membership, really plays at a higher level. It is truly an international organization. And in fact, IUCN is established within the United Nations as a formal observer. So at the United Nations General Assembly, IUCN is an observer with equal status to the World Bank. So IUCN also plays as an international organization, not just a not-for-profit organization. The other thing I will add is that this structure allows IUCN to work out solutions between non-governmental organizations and governments, and very importantly gives IUCN leverage and influence in advocacy with its government members to advance IUCN policy and biodiversity globally. Okay, thanks for that. And um, for people that are listening and are pretty new to IUCN, but also uh, older and want to uh, to get to know more about the basics of it, um, do you have other information to share with us about the IUCN 101 component? Well. Two answers. One is to read IUCN documents. I must say the IUCN website uh, under the Secretariat, different commissions, the member committees, has a wealth of information about how IUCN operates and what it's doing. But more importantly, youth are so well networked around the world. You are all much better than, than my generation at actually networking. So getting yourselves involved with the different components of the union, uh, participating in your national committee, through your own organization or as individuals. Uh, the commissions have been increasingly open to youth participation. I know that the Commission on Education and Communication and the World Protected Areas Commission are both actively engaging youth, including through Nature for All. And then the Secretariat, there are always jobs available be at headquarters or in the various offices of IUCN in the world. So there are professional opportunities as well as opportunities on the volunteer side to participate and learn more and actually be part of IUCN and join the cause. Thanks. That was so great. And really, uh, you put it uh, in a way that it's really accessible, George, for everybody to understand uh, the basics of IUCN. Pleased to have participated and I really am very excited about the opportunity that the youth delegates will have to have a real influence on the Congress and IUCN going forward. Thank you. I think we have our first topic wrapped. Yeah, that was Good amazing. Job.